So you're wondering, is my partner emotionally immature? And is that why we've been having so many problems and things have been feeling off? In this talk, that is gonna get cleared up for you. So you are going to know for sure if the issue in the relationship is that your partner is stuck in an emotional maturity level that is far below their years in age. This is going to help clear a lot of things up for you and it's going to answer some questions and we're going to figure out what to do from here. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below if you're back again. It is always good to have you. Special shout out to my shifters. Welcome here. Glad you could make it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, the button's about right down there. Like the video if you get something out of it, that would be amazing. And either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and a speaker, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where we are taking this work to the next level and you are being guided, supported, and helped the whole way through. You can get more information about The Shift Society in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day day. So what does this even mean to be in a relationship with an emotionally immature partner? Basically, emotional immaturity refers to someone's inability to recognize or control their emotions in an age appropriate way. So this emotionally mature, immature person will show a lack of depth of understanding about their emotions. And they'll also show a lack of depth of understanding of their partner's emotions. This can be any person in the relationship. This can be either partner. It's not specific to one gender. Either person in the relationship can be emotionally immature and both people in the relationship can have certain areas that they are more emotionally immature in and that need some work. Understanding that emotional immaturity puts a lot of stress and strain on a relationship. It can even sometimes make you feel like you are going crazy because that person lacks the same kind of ability to process and understand and consider their emotions, your emotions, what's happening, how to communicate, how to work things out in a mature and responsible way. And so if you are the one who is carrying the emotional maturity load in the relationship it can feel isolating. It can feel one-sided. It can feel frustrating. You can feel quite alone because they're not able to meet you where you're at, work things out, address things, talk about things, and deal with things in an emotionally mature way. Also understanding that if you are with someone who is emotionally immature, we are not here to judge. We are not here to label, to pigeonhole, to say they are bad and wrong. We are here simply to understand what is happening, to give you some clarity and relief so that you don't have to be wondering if you're the one that's going kind of crazy because you don't know what's going on in this relationship or what's happening. Knowing that if someone lacks emotional maturity, it is because that part of themselves never got a chance to develop adequately. It could be because of mental health issues. It could be because of personality disorder. It could be because of abuse or neglect, or they never had that teaching or that modeling during their upbringing. They never learned how to have it or it was stunted or halted because of something else that was going on. So we're here simply to be able to recognize it, not to judge it or blame someone for it. Recognizing emotional immaturity in your partner or in someone who could be a potential partner is less about stigmatizing or pathologizing and more about you being able to recognize what traits and behaviors in a relationship help to make you feel more safe and secure in that relationship. 
So if it's with a potential partner, you can recognize these things early on and make a decision about whether or not you think this is the right person for you. Or if it's in a long-term relationship that you're already in, you'll be able to identify those things and then you and your partner or your partner themselves be able to work on some of this stuff if there's space availability or willingness for that. But at the very least, you will be able to see more clearly what's going on and be able to manage yourself and your expectations and your responses based on what you know more about what's going on with them. So let's get right in to pinpointing each one of these main signs that your partner is stunted in their emotional maturity and really does lack it. The first one, and maybe one of the most concerning ones, is that they lack empathy. They don't see how their actions or their words or their behaviors could be affecting you or anyone else. They may not desire to hurt other people, and that might not be their intention, but they can't actually see it or understand it. When you say to them repeatedly something like, this hurts my feelings, or this really bothers me, or this really upsets me, and they don't say like, okay, I'm going to try to change this, let me be more mindful of this, and then they sometimes kind of slip up, or it's like kind of an ongoing thing that you guys have, and an issue that you're both trying to work on, that's different than someone that really is just like, why are you upset about this? this? This shouldn't be making you upset. What's wrong with you? Why is this a big deal? And they kind of can't see your perspective on something, can't feel for how something they are doing might be making you feel, which then can be somewhat crazy making is that they might then turn it on you. They might want to turn and be like, you're the one that's too sensitive. You're the one that's too needy. You're the one that's too difficult. You're the one who is wrong here. And then you maybe even start apologizing for bringing it up in the first place because now they've turned it on you and made you feel like you are in the wrong. Instead of being able to listen and try to understand, maybe explain themselves, maybe try for, to get you to understand where they might be coming from, like an honest effort to work something out, even if what they were doing wasn't intending to be hurtful, they can understand it from your perspective. But when they are unable to do that in several areas, or maybe even at all, then they really do lack that emotional maturity, which can then cause them to be really selfish. Because if they lack empathy, then they're only really going to be considering their own wants and needs. They're only really going to be considering how decisions impact them and not at all about how they might impact someone else, which when things are going great with someone like this, it's great. But as soon as things get hard, as soon as things get difficult, as soon as something happens that you're not okay with, then the relationship falls apart and it can be extremely frustrating because they are unable or unwilling to see anything other than from themselves. The next sign, they don't respect your boundaries. If you have set boundaries with your partner and they either completely disregard them or get completely offended by them or see your boundaries as a personal attack, this can be as simple as you just wanting some time for yourself, you wanting to do something differently than them, you not always wanting to do exactly what, what they want to do. It can about, be about you wanting kind of your own time and space, your own ideas and preferences, your own views on things, and you've allowed them to want different things and to see things differently and to have things that they want for themselves. And you're, you're willing to kind of create for two separate people to exist in this relationship, but they can't cope with that. And again, this could be because they struggle with abandonment issues, with some codependence, with some insecurity. And so they think that anything that is different between you two is a threat to the relationship. Anything that you want as far as your separateness as being your own person in the relationship threatens their security. And they take it as you pulling away or pushing away or pushing them away. And so them completely disregarding, disrespecting, and not even recognizing 
your boundaries and having no care for your boundaries means that they really, again, struggle to see someone else's perspective, how something is impacting someone else. They're only concerned about how it's impacting them. And there's no real space to consider both people in the relationship to have an awareness of their own emotions or of the other person's emotions. The next sign, they don't take responsibility. They are not able to acknowledge that they may have done something wrong or hurtful or harmful or made a mistake or messed up. They can't own up to it. They can't apologize. And maybe even if it is a two-way street where both people are engaged in the issue and you take responsibility for your part and apologize, maybe they might give a pad kind of proverbial apology, like, oh, I guess I'm sorry too, or I'm sorry, without saying anything else about it. And you can tell that they don't really mean it. They just can't admit when they messed up and they might even continuously blame you for any issue. I see this a lot with my kids when I call them out on something and I say, hey, that's not okay. What you did there wasn't okay. Well, I wouldn't have done this if she wouldn't have done this and they started it or they did something the other day and they never apologized for it and that's why I did this, right? And it's always this, it's never my fault. It's always because of someone else. If they wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. And maybe you have a partner like that too. Well. I wouldn't have not called you to, to let you know that I was gonna be late if you weren't always so difficult and controlling, right? Even if you have requested like, hey, if you're gonna be late, I just need to know because I'm you know, making supper or I have this other thing that I'd like to do or I wanna kinda know what the evening's gonna look like so I can kinda plan my life as well. And then if they blame you and are like, oh, well, you always get sound annoyed when I call and I'm going to be late or something doesn't go the way that you want it to. And they kind of turn it back on you. It can be any number of situations where you are making a request for something and then they are turning it on you, blaming you for it. You are asking for a change. You are saying that something wasn't okay with you. You are expressing a hurt or a pain and they turn it back on you and are unable or unwilling to take any responsibility for it. That can be incredibly frustrating in a relationship and it can be really painful and very confusing to be in a relationship like this because you never know and you start to wonder, was it my fault? Should I not have done this? Am I the one to blame? And over time, and maybe you've already experienced this, can really chip away at your self-esteem. It can really chip away at your sense of self. And if that is you right now, I have a guide for you. It's called the Simple Steps to Self-Trust. And this is gonna help you get back yourself. If you have been in a relationship with an emotionally immature person that where you often feel like you are in the wrong or it's your fault, you don't know what you're doing wrong and you've started to doubt yourself, you've started to feel like a shell of yourself, you've started to really question yourself or don't really know who you are anymore or what your place is in the relationship and everything just feels confusing, then make sure you grab that guide, that simple steps to self-trust is gonna help you rebuild that trust within yourself to be able to stand sturdy and grounded on your own two feet. And and your BS meter is going to be more sensitive. So you're going to know, no, this one was not my fault. This one is not completely on me. I may have played a part, but this is not completely on me. And I am not going to continue to be manipulated by this. And in order to have that in a sturdy, stable way and believe that, we need to be able to trust ourselves and build that foundation. So make sure you grab that. And another part of them not taking responsibility for their words or their actions is that they will also be less likely to take responsibility in their everyday life. That they struggle at work, in their friendships, with their family, they drop the ball a lot, they don't follow through, they make a lot of excuses, it's always somebody else's fault, and they don't take responsibility in their everyday life in addition to in their relationship life. Number four, they have difficulty controlling their emotions. And number four, emotionally immature people have a really hard time managing their emotions. Everything can even be going fine and then something small happens and it throws them off 
and they get angry, they get upset, they go internal and give the silent treatment and block you out, or they scream, or they yell, or they blame. Everyone can have a bad day. We've all had moments where we don't handle our emotions in the most mature way. But when there are these patterns of outbursts that are inappropriate to the situation or that person seems out of control emotionally on a regular basis and unable to calm down and unable to manage themselves, even when small things happen, let alone when bigger things happen, then that is a sign. They also can't seem to have even a reasonable conversation about any kind of conflict or issue without getting overly emotional, without getting overly worked up. And maybe it can even feel like you are dealing with a five-year-old that is having a tantrum at even small things or whenever you call them into a conversation to work something out, to deal with something, to resolve an issue. That is a big sign that someone is really lacking in their emotional maturity. The next one along this same vein is that they take things really personally. Even the slightest comment, criticism, or complaint can set them off. They make everything about themselves and can't seem to take a step back and consider the situation rationally. They can't consider how they might have done or said something that wasn't okay with you. They can't consider that someone might have a comment or a complaint that is about trying to resolve something instead of an attack on them that it's not about you trying to come down on them or shame them as a human being, but an attempt to address something and work it out. They make the issue about them and they shut down any kind of reasonable, constructive, or helpful conversation. And number six, on this same vein of taking things personally, they often get very defensive And you might often even feel like you are walking on eggshells when you're around them. Even the smallest comment or even look can set them off. And before you know it, they are launching into criticism and yelling and getting upset and calling you names and lashing you out and shutting you down and acting like you are intentionally trying to hurt them. So quickly, they go into defensive mode and their radar is way up and perhaps overly sensitive to any kind of comment or complaint. And they don't see it as, again, you trying to bring something up to work it out, to figure it out, to move forward. They see it as you coming after them. And so they need to defend themselves. They need to get angry. They need to push you back because you are coming at them. And especially if you're approaching this in a clean, clear, and classy way, which we work a lot on in my membership community, The Shift Society, about a really good solid, emotionally mature communication, if you are doing that and this is how they are reacting, then that is a big sign that they lack a lot of emotional maturity. And then number seven, it makes sense that if someone is lacking in emotional maturity, they will not talk about their feelings. They will not be honest about what's really going on within them. They will ignore it. They will bypass it. They will avoid it, which can then leave you feeling really confused. You're wondering, you're guessing, you're trying to read their mind. You're trying to guess what they're thinking. You're trying to figure out what's going on inside of them. You're trying to decipher what they need or how to make things better or what went wrong or why it went wrong. And there's a lot of questions in your head. And again, you can feel really unstable and really uncertain because you can see that it isn't okay, but you don't know why and they won't talk about it. Your partner might even joke that they don't have feelings and that's why they don't want to talk about it. Where very clearly they do have feelings. You can tell that they are having a lot of feelings, but they won't actually talk about it. 
when someone says that, you know, I just don't have any feelings, it, it's not true. And it usually just means that they don't know what to do with their feelings. They don't know how to understand them. They don't know how to process them. They don't know how to figure out what's going on inside. It can feel like too much. And so they kind of shut it down, shut it out, push it down, shut you down, shut you out, push you down in their attempt to try to solve or resolve whatever it is that's going on inside of them. But we know it just creates bigger problems for everyone. It can be very lonely to be in a relationship with someone who is emotionally immature, someone who you don't feel like you can have honest and open, authentic conversations, work things through, adjust and adapt to each other and what's important to you and be able to express, talk about and work through what's important to each person. To feel like you truly have a partner who is with you, there for you, you are there for them, you are working together. It can be very isolating, it can be very frustrating, it can cause a whole lot of resentment, it can make you doubt yourself and question yourself, and even if it gets really intense and in some situations make you question yourself and not even really know yourself anymore. If this has happened to you or you're going through this, make sure you get that simple steps to self-trust. That one is gonna be really important. It's in the description there and it's gonna help you get the ground back underneath your feet and learn how to feel more solid, secure, trusting and confident in who you are to rebuild that sense of self if you've been in a, in a relationship like this for a while or you've been in several repeated relationships like this. Also, we are going to talk in the next video about some things you can do when you are in a relationship with someone who is emotionally mature to kind of help things move along in a positive way, knowing that you won't be able to change everything about them, but there are definitely some things that you can do to take better care of yourself and to model better behavior for them and questions that you can ask them to help them hopefully to be a little bit more introspective and to be able to take a little bit more time to reflect and be responsible for their experience. We'll talk more about that in the next talk. But until then, let me know in the comment section below what connected with you. Is this something that you are dealing with? Do you have a close relationship with someone or a partner who is emotionally immature? How is it for you? What are you struggling with? What do you need? What did you find helpful about this talk? Let me know in the comment section below. Grab that simple steps to self-trust. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.